the 2020 presidential election is around the corner. Let's all mobilize. Let's all be on the right side of history. Make the, make the moral choice between love versus hate. Let's do the right thing. <laughs> It took just eight hours. Donald Trump couldn't help himself. At 6.50 a.m. today, he tweeted, quote, be nice if Spike Lee could read his notes, or better yet, not have to use notes at all when doing his racist hit on your president, who has done more for African Americans, criminal justice reform, lowest unemployment numbers in history, tax cuts, et cetera, than almost any other president. Of course, the sheer irony of that tweet hits you like a punch on the arm. What does it say about Trump that he interprets a speech about love and doing the right thing as a racist hit? Donna? Wow, thanks so much. Happy Black, <laughs> no, Happy Black I mean, History Month. Uh, how is everything about him? How is know, everything well, I mean, about that, race? That Every... he would take that on is so amazing. And also the whole reading of the notes thing. Teleprompter Trump is going to go after Spike Lee for like reading notes. Give me a break. I mean, it, it, the, the president thinks that everything is about him. And in this case, you know, maybe it was about him. But to turn every, I mean, he is right now in a bit of a, 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 a racially tinged scandal in that it took him, you know, days to say anything and then only under persistent questioning from the press corps right. about someone who targeted, I, I mean, he, he yeah. is very vulnerable on this front and, and to project his own insecurities and fears about how he's perceived onto someone who is winning an award and talking about right. political activism is ridiculous, um, even for him. It, it, as my grandmother would always say, a hit dog will holler. Right. And so when you talk about, you know, love and togetherness and peace, you know, he, he's going to yelp because he knows that he doesn't represent those things. But also there's there's a deeper level to this with, with some of the sort of prominent black people that Trump is always hostile about. He's particularly angry about the sort of New York elites that he used to be able to socialize with, that he used to be able to run in the same circles of, who now reject him, who now publicly criticize him. You know, he wasn't, he wasn't two degrees of separation from Spike Lee. They were in the same kind of places in New York, and now the same Spike Lee who he might have had drinks with at one point or might have had at his parties is saying that he's a terrible person. So the president, you know, it's not just his bigotry, it's also his vanity that he's no longer one of the cool kids. Um, I feel like... Hollywood has sort of shed some of the things that maybe made them tricky surrogates for Democrats. I mean, they're not, there wasn't a, a, a sort of speech from the, I didn't see the whole thing, but there wasn't a speech, Jeremy did, he's gonna tell me about it. A speech <laughs> from, but, but, the, but this is, this was about, this was about what the, the positive side of being motivated, mm -hmm. do, do it out of the, for your better angels, and it was about just participate. I mean, I, I feel like Democrats have sort of um, gotten the Hollywood and celebrities and their super surrogates onto a more productive message. <laughs> well, I'm not sure if it's Democrats got them on a message. Well, they got However, themselves on a message. They did. More constructive. Absolutely. I mean, I mean, it's hard to argue with what Spike Lee said last night. Uh, love over hate. Mobilize. Mm -hmm. Exercise your vote. Mm -hmm. Do the right thing. Be on the right side of history. Who's against those things? I guess it's your interpretation well, about what Trump the right was. side is. <laughs> and Donald Trump knows that he's going to be on the wrong side right. of history. That's why he's taking this so personally. He can't help himself uh, but to respond to something like this. Um, and you know, maybe there's something, <laughs> yeah, as you were saying, yeah. in there that he was hoping somebody would talk about him at the Oscars, and finally it hit. I'm surprised it took eight hours for him to respond. I guess he was in bed <laughs> at that point. Uh, but I do think messages like that, using platforms like that to talk about where we need to go as a country is a, is a good thing. Right. Um, and I, you know, first of all, and also congratulations to Spike Lee. Right, right. right. Jeremy, I got fired from The View for not knowing pop culture, so you and I can get through this together. It's just one question I have for you. Um, as just a psychological profile, he cares what people in the media say about him. He cares about what Hollywood elites say about him. He is so in, sort of under the spell of how he is held and how he is perceived by these kinds of people. If, he, if Fox News was enough for him, he wouldn't send tweets like that. He wouldn't watch the Oscars. He wouldn't care what we say about him here. And what fundamentally makes our country strong are not walls and not even negotiations overseas, but the fact that we are the United States, the fact that we actually are together on the core principles that make our country the value-based nation that it is. 
and the fact that we welcome people from all walks of life and they all have a seat at the table of our democracy. And I, that may sound lofty, but that's something the president fundamentally does not understand. And he, and he seems to, I mean, there are always opportunities. I mean, uh, and, and, they, and they, they, they definitely, they admittedly, God, I know, they fall to Democrats more than Republicans. But there are always opportunities to take something lovely to say, I saw, I saw Green Book or I saw Star is Born. Mm -hmm. Great I mean, there, there are always opportunities for presidents to try to ride these waves. He's so triggered by it. He'll never have those opportunities. If we can't come together on Oscar night, when can we come together? <laughs> <laughs> Kobe, so That's you why did you're it. such you a fan. It. You, <laughs> you did it. Coming up, it's news that was broken on this program by one of our favorite guests who's back today, the bipartisan outcry over the emergency that wasn't. That's next.